Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Okay, so welcome to Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring podcast. I think it's number 18. It is now February 16th, 2017. And I need to shut my window. There's a loud truck out my window. I need to shut the window. My cat wants the window open, but I need to close. Kisun. Kitty, kitty. Hi. Kisun, boy. My cat's name is Kisun. Kisun is Russian for kitty. Kitty, kitty. I feed him raw frozen chicken hearts and raw freeze-dried and frozen food. I want to say that I am Shannon Kringen, and I'm really, really terrified right now. Earlier, I was flipping out and crying. For those of you who don't know, I'm Shannon Kringen. I'm 48 years old. I live in Seattle, and I suffer from anxiety and depression and obsessive compulsive disorder and a tendency towards borderline personality disorder, although I'm very highly functional. And I might have cyclothymia, and I might even be a little bit autistic and dyslexic, but I haven't actually been diagnosed as autistic or dyslexic. I have actually been diagnosed as having a bit of cyclothymia, which is kind of like being manic depressive, except you have rapid cycle mood changes. So your mood goes up and down. You have what's called hypomania. And you have what's called low-grade depression. So, you know, like a manic depressive bipolar person would like stay in bed for days at a time and when they're down and then when they're up, they might stay up all night for days and feel really euphoric and think that they don't need to sleep. I don't have that. I have moods that change rapidly and I've been full-time employed for since I was 17. I've never really been unemployed. So... My emotional challenges basically show up in ways that don't prevent me from working. Um, I am somebody who is not real successful in terms of my social life and in terms of having close friends. I don't seem to be well at that. It's a miracle that I have a boyfriend right now. We've been dating for about two and a half years and he has a lot of other friends. He's a musician in a band and he's a photographer, and he's a freelance person, and he does his own thing, and he's very independent, So, and he's a little bit older than me. So I guess we're compatible enough so that um, he lives in his house that he owns, and I live in my Section 8 apartment, and I have reasonable rent that's only about a third of my income, which is a miracle in itself. <clears throat> but I will say that when I, when I get manic... I am hypomanic, which means that I just have a little bit of euphoria and I have really good creative, interesting ideas and I take tons of photos and I am very like rapid cycly with it. And then when I get down, I get kind of irritable and grumpy, but I don't stay in bed for days at a time. And I always am able to work. I've always been able to be an, be an employed person because I feel safe and secure. I kind of thrive on working. I model for art classes. So Okay, so I have mental health issues and I am going, I guess this is Shannon's video, uh, Shannon's audio diary right now because I thought I was going to uh, do some artistic poems and music. I might get a keyboard. I might try to jazz this up a little bit with some more music and poetry and, and, and add some cool echoes later on in the show. I'll play you some echoey thing I made recently with some creative writing that I did with my creative writing group that meets uh, once a week at a bookstore in Seattle. But I will say that I'm really scared because I have a needle biopsy uh, scheduled for my right breast um, very soon. And I'm going to a certain uh, breast imaging clinic that's supposed to be very good. Thankfully, I have affordable Obamacare, affordable healthcare, ACA, whatever you wanna call it, Obamacare, same thing. I am low income, so I basically have Apple Medicaid here in Washington State, USA. So I get to see the doctor and not worry about a big medical bill. And it's amazing that I went and got a mammogram because I basically work as a model for uh, medical students as well as art students. And I kind of thrive on work. 
Uh, it gives me structure and I don't really have much of a family. Li- I have a mother and a father, but I don't have any brothers or sisters or kids. Never got married, never had kids. Live by myself with my cat. And so my life raft is my job. I love to work. I get hired by a bunch of different art schools and a couple different medical schools. And the Bastyr uh, medical students have given me a lot of breast exams to practice and give and I give them feedback and they give me feedback on you know how's this pressure well they've been feeling my breasts have been extra lumpy lately and I had breast reduction surgery in 1993 so I do have scars so hopefully this is just scar tissue but I went for a mammogram because I hadn't had one in 15 years and so I went and got one because my Obamacare covered it thankfully and I have scar tissue And they said, okay, well, we're concerned about your right breast because the scar tissue looks a lot more dense on the right breast than it does on the left. So I had a second mammogram, which was also covered with my Obamacare. Thank you, Obama. And they did a 3D image of it. And they were still concerned. And so then they did ultrasound. And the radiologist sat with me and did ultrasound and said there's this one little area right here that looks like scar tissue except it's kind of curling and twisting and bending and 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 heading up towards your nipple in a way that I want to make sure that it's really just scar tissue and not something that's cancerous or she said the third there's three options basically after I get my needle biopsy I'm going to wait three to five days for the results, and it's either going to be benign, no cancer, healthy cells, just scar tissue, or it could be cancer, which is obviously the worst result, or it could be a third result, which is abnormal cells that are not really cancer, but they're not entirely healthy either, and they're concerned. And she says that if that's the case, they recommend removing all of that tissue that seems abnormal or semi-abnormal. So I guess I'll cross that bridge if I come to it. I've been freaking out. I've been crying and panicking. I didn't really want to turn the microphone on when I was crying. And I didn't want to say angry, scary things into the mic that I would later regret and embarrass myself like I have done (laughs) in the past. Sometimes when I'm real emotional, those of you who, um, I don't know if anybody's even listening to this, but if you are listening, Thank you so much for listening. I welcome questions and comments and feedback of any kind. But if nobody's listening, that's okay because I'm doing this for myself mostly anyway. So I am 48 and I don't know how much longer I'll be living on this planet. So I may as well record my voice while I'm here. So primarily I am a talented photographer and I have a website and I share my art. But lately I've been thinking I'm going to get a breast biopsy And I'm also, my filling fell out, and thankfully my Obamacare covers my dental, covers my vision, covers my biopsy. So I'm going to get my filling fixed on my tooth where it fell out, because my tooth hurts and I need to get that fixed. I am also going to get the breast biopsy and see what happens, and I was going to maybe take a sedative for it, but it's too complicated to to reach the doctor. So I'm not going to get, I'm not going to take a sedative, I'm just going to tough it out and decide if I'm going to drive myself to and from the appointment, or am I going to have um, a friend drop me off? My boyfriend maybe could drop me off, but he has a show. His band is playing, so he can't. Never mind. I don't. You don't need to know the details. You know what? I'm really stressed out right now. So I even thought about airing a rerun this week, but um, I'm just going to talk about my fear. I hope I don't have breast cancer. Um, and if I do, I know some Facebook people that are breast cancer survivors, so I will talk to them about that. And my mom is actually good friends with a woman who is a breast cancer survivor. So hopefully I won't have to have surgeries and treatments, but if I do, I have support. I have people I can talk to. See, now I'm calm. Earlier I was crying and my face was bright red and I called up the the clinic and was trying to tell them that I might have a panic attack and I might faint and all this bad stuff. You know, I might freak out and they're like, that's okay, as long as you can hold still and we'll hold your hand. And if you cry and you're scared and you shake, that's okay. As long as we can do the test on you and you hold still, it's fine. I'm a little freaked out that they're going to put a metal mar- a metal marker in me. And so I might ask for titanium because I'm worried about metal in my body. But um, as far as I know, I'm not allergic to metal and I've never had a reaction to any medication 
So, and I don't have any breast cancer on either side of my family. Cancer does not run in my family. And I eat really healthy. So it could be that this is just scar tissue and that my right breast scar tissue is just healing in a strange way from my breast reduction surgery in 93. So it could just be that, you know, my tissue is extremely asymmetrical. The radiologist told me that all women's breasts are asymmetrical, but my scar tissue is very, very different on one side from the other. So she wants to make sure that that's just my own unique scar tissue and not something that's that's wrong in my body. I also eat diatomaceous earth, which is supposed to be a good body uh, cleanser. So hopefully with my diet, I'm healthy and my DNA is pretty good and we don't have cancer on either side of my family as far as I know. I don't really know my family really well other than my mother and my father, but as far as they can tell me, there's no cancer in our family on either side. So I'm relieved. So I'm going to go to the dentist and I'm going to have a breast biopsy. Maybe I'll do a poem about this. Breast biopsy, needle, breast biopsy, needle, need it to be normal. Please give me a normal result. Shannon Kringen, goddess Kring. Hey, this is the other thing I was going to say. Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the kring. Catch the wind song, spiral drive, crack the code, left and right node. I wander and I wander, tripping over grasshoppers, moon haulers, key robbers. Enchanted lands, smoky hands, rough and cracked. Take this sand and stand alone, all one. I present the present, desert the desert. Exercise, bring, exorcism, cleanse. Shaka shaka, shaka shaka, shaka shaka. That's funny, my cat just looked at me when I said shaka shaka. Shaka shaka, he looks at me when I say that, that's cute. So that's one of my Kring Speak poems. Tom Petty widens my jetty. I will say that my dad offered... My dad took me to my first concert when I was 13, the Rolling Stones, 1981, the Kingdom. And my second concert is 1984, Tom Petty at the Coliseum in Seattle. I am a huge Tom Petty fan. My dad also took me to see Bob Dylan with Tom Petty. Uh, I think that was at the Tacoma Dome in 1988, not sure. I also saw Tom Petty, I think in 96 at the Gorge. And I saw Neil Young at the Gorge around the same time, maybe 94 five or four and I am going to see Tom Petty again I saw him in 1999 at the Tacoma Dome I really really love his music and his voice when I was 11 I heard refugee on a jukebox and ran over to the jukebox and was like oh my god what is this and then ever since I've been hooked on his music I love the way he plays with his voice the way he bends the notes up and down And he has several voices. He sings in the sort of Dylan, Bird's voice, Roger McGuinn and Roger McGuinn and Bob Dylan. And he also has a sort of Beatles-y, George Harrison-y kind of sound, like folky, folky Beatles-y kind of thing that he does. And he also sings in the sort of old black man voice, which is a fun voice, which is more recent, like since about 2000 or 1998 or so, he's been singing in this other voice. So it's really fun to listen to him. Tori Amos actually is, a, is another one of my favorite musicians. Tori Amos and Tom Petty are my two favorite singer, songwriter, vocalists, and they're very prolific songwriters. I met Tori Amos three times, gave her hand-painted shoes. I will say that I'm sad though. I Okay, I'm happy that my dad uh, said he would get me Tom Petty tickets. So I bought the Tom Petty tickets and my dad is reimbursing me. I guess how much they were. The cheap seats he's playing, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers are coming to Seattle uh, August 19th. I think it's a Saturday. Is it the 18th or the 19th? I don't know, but they're coming. And they're playing at Safeco Field, which they've never played before. And they usually play at the Gorge, which is really hard to get to. So I'm so happy and grateful that my dad and I get to go see Tom Petty. The cheapest tickets were like $69 plus service fee, which would have been about $89 or $90. So the cheapest tickets are basically $90 with service fees, maybe $94. 
So my dad and I splurged and we got the $129 tickets way up towards the front. We got row, I think, 21 in section B by the stage. So for $150 a ticket with all the service fees, it ends up being, actually it ended up being about $180 a ticket because I had to join the Tom Petty fan club to get the pre-sale. I wanted to hurry up and get the best tickets I could. So I paid extra 65 bucks to join the fan club. So it's really, really, really ridiculous. But I'm going to just see Tom Petty one more time in my lifetime. In 1999, when I saw Tom Petty at the Tacoma Dome, my friend said he won tickets on the radio and offered me his tickets. What was I thinking? I said, oh, no, I already have tickets. That was crazy. See, that proves that I'm mentally ill right there. Because why would my brain not say yes, thank you? And, 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 let him give me free tickets and then just give away my tickets to somebody else. So I could have sat really close because the Tacoma Dome was a horrible show because the acoustics were so echoey. It was so echoey that I couldn't even understand what song they were singing until they were like 30 or 30 seconds to a minute into the song. And I know all their songs, like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Mud Crutch and the Traveling Wilburys. I pretty much know all the lyrics to most of those songs. It's one of the only bands I can say that about. Tom Petty, Tori Amos, I pretty much know most of her music as well. Have all of their um, digital albums. Tom Petty and Tori Amos have a lot of Bob Dylan, Rolling Stones, Neil Young. I like Beck. I like bits and pieces of jazz and classical and blues. I went and saw Jeff Beck at the zoo where I volunteer for free. That was amazing. Amazing show. Good guitar player, Jeff Beck. Very unique. So what was I going to say? I'm really happy about the Tom Petty tickets. That was so generous of my dad to get us tickets. We're going to have fun. Um, we'll probably just walk or take the bus to get there because <laughs> parking is a hassle, so we're not going to do that. So what was I going to say? I uh, Facing the fact that I might have cancer, I probably don't have breast cancer, but if I do, it just it made me think about my mortality. I'm 48 years old. I had an abortion in my 20s which I sometimes regret, but I was just too scared. I was in a kind of dysfunctional relationship with this guy who wanted to have a kid with me, but he was polyamorous. He didn't believe in marriage. He didn't believe in monogamy. I was afraid to quit my job. When I found out I was pregnant, I was afraid to quit my job. I wanted to keep making money. He didn't have a stable job. He was a freelance guy and we didn't live together and so at the time I was just too scared and he didn't want to marry me I didn't want to move back in with my parents I didn't want to be a single welfare mother type of a, of a, of a person especially with the lack of social services we have in the United States of America so in 1996 I had an abortion so if I had given birth I would have a 21 year old kid right now I mean I might even be a grandmother so I feel a little sad that I I, I never had a child and ever since my abortion, I've been too scared to ever get pregnant again. So I've been very careful to never allow that to happen ever again. So now I'm 48, pretty much too old to have a kid. So I feel very sad. And I feel sad that my life is, um, people think I'm vulnerable. Like here I am on public radio, public website, sharing, you know, spilling my guts, saying a lot of personal things. And people think I'm vulnerable and I'm brave when I do this. Am I? I'm not sure. I feel like I'm compelled to do this. I'm compelled to share uh, with whoever wants to listen. You know, whoever you are listening right now, thank you. I mean, there might be nobody listening for all I know. But if you are listening, I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope you're entertained or inspired or intrigued in some way, or it's helping you feel something about yourself, having an insight to yourself. I don't know. I don't really have control over how you perceive me. But I will say thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate if you're listening. And again, my name is Shannon Kringen. I call myself Goddess Kring. I will say that I feel like some people that admire me think I'm brave for sharing in this way. I feel like I'm a very fearful person. And I model nude for art classes for a living as a full-time freelance person. Uh, but I don't feel vulnerable when I model. I feel I have a lot of fear in life in general. I'm afraid of, of being homeless. I'm afraid of running out of money. I'm afraid of, what am I afraid of? I guess I'm afraid of being homeless. I'm afraid of, of becoming really mentally ill and losing my mind and having a nervous breakdown. 
So I basically am driven by fear. Like I love making art and I love my cat. My cat is sitting on my lap right now and I'm happy that he's sitting on my lap. Kisun, kisun, kitty, kitty, kisun, kitty, kitty. My cat is happy. I have a really nice landlord. I have Section 8 housing. Finally, my rent is only a third of my income. I only make about 1500 bucks a month, so my rent is about 550 right now. If my income goes up, my rent will go up. If my income goes down, my rent will go down. So that's amazing. Uh, but I love to work and I work really hard. So my rent will, my, my income will probably stay about the way it is or go higher. I don't know. I don't think it'll get lower, but um, I am very stressed out. I have a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders. I wish that I would go get more massages. I know a place that's only $27 for inexpensive sliding scale type massage. I should probably do that more often. I'm just, I feel like my life is very armored. Like I was too afraid to have a child and I'm too afraid to do anything else for a living. I've been modeling for 25 years. I sometimes love being an art model for other people and I sometimes feel very tired. It's a very painful job physically. Last night I did a pose. It's uh, nine hours total. It was for, it's for a sculpture class and it meets once a week and it's for three hours a session and the people are nice. And they're doing clay sculptures of me, and it's interesting to see. Although um, I'm really kind of self-conscious about my belly, I have a bit of a, a Buddha belly. Oh, I got an eyelash in my eye, so I have a bit of a belly. So when you're a figure model, you know I certainly don't have a perfect body. I'm about five foot eight and a half, and I my weight kind of goes up and down. I had breast reduction surgery, so I have scars. I don't shave my pubic hair or my armpits, so I'm pretty natural. I wear a little bit of makeup, not much at all. Maybe a little bit of eyeliner, a little bit of lip color. I don't put a bunch of foundation on my skin. So I'm pretty natural. I just use coconut oil as my lotion, no toxic chemicals. But what I'll say is, and I had breast reduction scars, and so the older I get, the more my breasts are kind of shriveling up, and I have wrinkles and scars and zits, and you know, I'm not perfect, and I have freckles, and I model nude for 25 years. I've been doing that since I was in my 20s, and I'm very, very grateful. It took me years to break into the figure model circuit. I've been doing it for, you know, half my life, pretty much. I'm 48, and I started when I was like 23, it's a very physically hard job at times. Like again, it's sometimes very painful. You have to get in these weird positions and stay still for long periods of time. Sometimes I have hip pain, I have foot pain, I have back pain, neck and shoulder pain. Now that I'm 48, I'm getting more pains. So I have to be careful with getting enough exercise and stretching. So basically modeling has taken a toll on me physically. It also takes a lot of mental energy because you're sitting there completely still and not saying a word, which is fine. I mean, I love to daydream. So I just sit there and meditate and or daydream or sometimes write poems in my head. You know, words will pop into my head and I'll write them down. That's how I've written some of my poems. Oh, I need to take a deep breath. So as you can hear, I'm a little stressed out right now. I am going soon to get a needle biopsy in my breast and I'm just thinking about my life and my mortality and thinking that my life would be so different if I, if I had had that child. In 1996, if I had given birth to a child, my kid would be 21 now and I might even be a grandmother. Who knows? But at the time, I had no driver's license. I had no car. I lived in a tiny nine foot by 12 apartment with no bathroom. I shared bathroom down the hall with other people. I just had started doing my Goddess Kring TV show. I was modeling part time and working at a Xerox place on weekends. And the guy that I got pregnant with, it was his idea to, to, to have a child. And I didn't really think I wanted that. He sort of talked me into it. And then I changed my mind and I chickened out. So I'll never know what would have happened if I'd made another choice. There's, other, there's another part of me that regrets uh, having breast reduction surgery. I had very large breasts, triple D. They were uncomfortable, gave me back trouble, and they were very asymmetrical. So from a cosmetic standpoint, maybe I look a little better with my breast reduction. I don't know. But uh, I will say that I've been able to be a figure model for all these 25 years, even after my surgery with my scars and everything. I look fine. When you're a figure model for artists, you don't have to look perfect. You have to just be 
able to hold a good pose and be inspiring to the artists and be easy to work with and show up on time. It doesn't matter. It's not, it's not about having a, a beauty contest or whatever. So although I am beautiful in my own way and I'm graceful and I'm Nordic and I look like a, a Scandinavian Nordic Viking with long, curly, naturally curly hair, etc. you know, greenish eyes, you know, nice pinkish skin. The painters tell me they love to paint me because they see a lot of of pinks in my skin and it's fun to paint the sort of Scandinavian looking blondish hair with pinkish skin. You know, pink and green are the opposites. Red and green are opposites on the color wheel. I've taken a lot of art and design classes and color theory, so I know a lot about color and uh, complementary colors and and the opposites on the color wheel, etc., tertiary, all that kind of stuff. So I know my color theory. So basically painters and sketch artists have been drawing me and painting me for many years. I'm extremely grateful that I have built a career doing that. But what I've missed out on is personal relationships. I don't have a lot of close friends. I don't have a very big family other than my mother and my father. I recently went to Santa Barbara to visit my dad's cousin and his wife and my great aunt. That was really nice. Mostly I went there to take photos and hang out by myself. But they're all um, a little bit introverted, so they were okay with that. They do their own thing. I did my own thing. I took a lot of amazing pictures. I went to the ocean. But basically I miss out. So I don't know if I'm just wounded and I avoid people and, you know, intimacy chasing me feel like it's erasing me. Is it that? Is it my wound? Or do I avoid people because I would rather just be with plants and animals and do my artwork? You know, if you go to my website, shannonkringen.com, you'll see lots of photos, some paintings. I paint shoes. I record my voice in a musical way. You know, I've missed out on certain kinds of relationships in my life. I've had lots of different boyfriends, but it's never really worked out too well. Um, Dated some fascinating people. Mostly they weren't compatible with me, I guess. I appreciate every man that I've ever dated. You know, it was worth a try. The guy I'm seeing now, I've been dating for about two and a half years and we're still getting along pretty well. We're very different. He's much more conventional than I am, but he's a little bit eccentric and I'm definitely eccentric. So I don't know. I just feel like knowing that I might have breast cancer has made me look at my life in a different way. Like, okay, you know, life is, is temporary. Life is fragile. We never know when we're going to die. Uh, all of us have a limit. All of us have a limited time on this planet. Part of me is actually tired of being here and wish that I could just pass away and rest in peace. Not that I want to commit suicide. I've thought about suicide a lot, but I've never attempted it. And I hope I never do. I'm just being honest and saying that I'm tired. I'm 48 and I I work really hard and I'm exhausted from overwork, basically. A lot of Americans probably are. Uh, So I will say that my life is a bit out of balance. I feel like, you know, I had an abortion and I'm sad about that, although I'm glad it was my choice to make that choice. But I'm sad and I'll never know what would have happened otherwise. But at the time, I had no driver's license, no car, was living in a tiny apartment, had a minimum wage job, was basically living in poverty just like I am right now. Although now I have a full-time freelance job as a model for artists and medical students. And I have a car and I have a little bit of money saved up. So I'm not like, I'm not like living like on the edge of, of having no money. I'm okay. I'm definitely low income. And I have my Obamacare, Medicaid, and I'm receiving some benefits from DSHS. So basically I am receiving some social service help and I'm seeing a therapist every couple weeks and trying to work on my stuff. I am a really talented photographer um, and part of me feels ashamed of the fact that I have a lot of talent, but I'm not really very successful in a way. So, but I don't want to put myself down when I say that I'm not trying to just put myself down and be down on myself. I'm just acknowledging that I feel like I have a lot of potential and I'm not using it, but I also have mental health issues. I have OCD and borderline and cyclothymia and rapid cycle moods and I'm a little bit dyslexic and I just tend to panic and freak out. I don't know if I have post-traumatic stress or what, but I I tend to panic and and, and, uh, assume the worst or 
it's just, in other words, it's really hard for me to grab uh, control over my thoughts and say, hey, brain, you know, when I meditate, I mean, I've done two and a half, 10 day silent meditation retreats called Vipassana. And I, I got through that and I did it. Um, so I have done a lot of meditation in my life and listened to Eckhart Tolle videos. And I just sometimes I listen to these videos and I realize that I can be a witness to my thoughts. You know, I have racing thoughts and feelings and they're out of control and they, and they freak out. And I feel um, sometimes like I have no control over my thoughts and my feelings. But when they, when they tell you to meditate, they teach you that you can observe your thoughts and feelings and you can realize that there's a silent witness. I don't know if that's your higher self or your soul or part of God or what, that's another thing I wanted to talk about what I think God is. So I wanted to say thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I think I'm going to take a short break and play a little poem for you. And I'm going to continue on with this podcast. I want to talk about what I think God is. But I want to say that there's my higher self, the silent witness when I meditate. They can observe, oh, I'm panicking. Oh, I'm assuming the worst. Because tomorrow I'm going to go to a breast imaging place and they're going to anesthetize my breast with a needle. And I'm very afraid of needles. I sometimes faint. So I'm going to have to get through this. I don't want to take drugs or a sedative. So I'm going to show up and I'm going to let them numb out my breast skin. And then I'm going to let them inject a needle into me and take a sample and then put a titanium marker inside me in case they need to find that spot ever again. So I'm going to try to get through this without having a panic attack and without freaking out. I sometimes cry at the dentist. I sometimes faint when they do the needle injection of Novocaine. So I'm hoping that I don't faint tomorrow when they do this breast biopsy on me. So I'm just looking at my life. I'm 48 years old, and I guess I don't really need to be so judgmental. You know, I feel like I have a lot of potential. But I feel almost like when somebody tells me I have really pretty hair, I enjoy that when people compliment me because I have long curly hair that's, you know, kind of blondish and streaked. And um, of course, I streak it with a frosting kit. <laughs> but when I lived in California as a child, my hair was naturally sun streaked because my natural hair color is sort of a dark blonde, light brownish ash color, kind of greenish. So when I streak it blonde, it looks pretty natural. So my hair looks really nice and I was blessed with, you know, my DNA is good, thick, curly hair. So when people compliment my hair, I think, well, thank you, that's really nice. But then I feel guilty, like, like I should apologize for my hair. Like some people are jealous that don't have, you know, that wish they had the kind of hair that I had. And I used to have really large breasts. And I used to feel almost guilty for having large breasts. Like some people are jealous of women who have large breasts. And that's just horrible. So it's like, not only am I ashamed of my flaws and my imperfections, I'm ashamed of my beauty, of my talent. I have a lot of talent. But then at the same time, I'm ashamed that I don't use all my talent, that I waste my talent. But then I realize I need to have compassion for myself and realize that part of why I'm not more successful is because I have mental health challenges. I have a lot of anxiety. So what I'm doing when I say this out loud on this monologue is I'm trying to acknowledge how I actually feel and just express it. So if you're listening, I hope you're getting something out of this. You know, I mean, this could be that I'm narcissistic and that I'm just rambling on about myself. But I hope that my expression is helpful to somebody else. You know, I hope it's at least helpful to me and hopefully helpful to at least one other person. I don't really know. So I feel kind of sad. I feel like my grief is triggered and my anger and my fear by having this breast biopsy and then having my filling fall out. You know, the two uh, back teeth and my lower jaw on both sides, I've had those fillings fall out, I think, twice. Each filling has fallen out twice. And so every couple of years, it seems like I have to go back to the dentist and get them to refill that tooth. 
hoping I don't need a root canal that might be in my future, they tell me. So we'll see. I'm 48, so my teeth are starting to get older and um, <laughs> my whole body is older. So thank you for listening. I want to talk about health care and what I think it should be. And I could talk about what I think God is. So now here's a four minute poetic recording I did recently from some creative writing I wrote. Enjoy the Kring speak on Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring podcast radio show. Thank you to Hollow Earth Radio for having me do this on your, on your airwaves. Hollow Earth Radio, as well as I put this on Mixcloud, Bandcamp, YouTube, and Patreon after it airs on Hollow Earth Radio. Thank you for tuning in. Here's some poetry. Scatter, 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 to write, to write, to write. Scatter, scatter, taking flight, taking flight, driven to unwind the time, divide lines, divide interlude, interlude, plenty solitude, solitude. Got it, do, got it, do, got it, do. Feeding raw, frozen chicken hearts to my cats, to my Ground bone, ground organ meat, organ meat, organ meat. His new treats, His so, new to treats speed. so to speak. So to speak. Carnivore, Carnivore has awoken. Has awoken. Sardines, Sardines, venison, Sardines, chicken, venison, turkey, chicken, beef, turkey, beef, duck, beef, turkey, duck, beef, duck, beef, duck licks his bowl duck, clean. Licks his bowl happy clean. cat, happy, happy cat, cat, happy cat. Freeze dried, happy frozen raw. Grateful for grant. 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 Web design, web design. Mammogram, mammogram, ultrasound, ultrasound. Imaging, imaging, imaging. Gotta be healthy, 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 gotta be healthy. Wealthy and heart and soul, wealthy and heart and soul. Diatomaceous earth, silica, strengthening hair, skin and hair, skin and hair, skin and hair. Sail, sail. Soapy scale, soapy scale, cleanse, cleanse the body, cleanse the body, heavy metal, heavy metal, removed from the body, from the body. Rid the colon of parasites, if any, if any, if any. Get those Tom Petty wipes, my jetty ticket, got him section B, row twenty one, twenty one, twenty one. Mr. Kringen, Mr. Kringen, and me Mr. Going, Kringen, going. My father, my father. 1984, 1984 took me to see Tom, Tom Petty Wagons, my Jedi. Then we went to see Bob Dylan and Tom Petty in 1988. 1988. Now we're going to see Tom Petty in Seattle, 2017. Tom Petty Wagons, my Jedi. Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me. Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but blame us. Neil Young washes Neil Young away washes the, fertile away. Dung. the fertile dung. This has been sung. Goddess cream, bada boo, bada bing, let it seep from deep within. Intimacy chasing me, feel like it's a race, like it's a race, like it's a race. Here we are, here we are. Present moment, 2017, February. Keep at the podcast, make them laugh, get a keyboard, get a keyboard, get a keyboard, get a keyboard. Monologues, Monologues, voice work, spoken word, improv, keyboard. Keep on loving the self. Keep on loving others. Keep on loving others. Step in. Step in. Even if narcissism is one of your defense mechanisms, use it for good. Use it for good. Artwork and modeling. Artwork and modeling. See the shadow projection. See the shadow projection of politicians. Politician. Not, superstition. Not, superstition. Not superstition, utter hypocrisy, utter hypocrisy. Dissolving, utter democracy. dissolving democracy. See the shadow, See the shadow projections of politicians. Of politicians. Not, superstition. Not superstition, utter hypocrisy, utter hypocrisy. Dissolving, dissolving democracy. 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 
Step in, Step even, in. If even if narcissism is one of your defense mechanisms, use, mechanisms. For use for good, use for good. Art, use and for good. art and modeling, modeling and art. Modeling and art. This is Shannon Cream. This is Shannon Cream. Shannon Cream. Speak. February 2017. 2017. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. So, I know I say that 50 million trillion thousand times. Repetitive. Repetitive. Infinite. Repetitive. Intricate, infinite pattern. Intricate, intricate pattern. Intricate pattern. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. I will say that I, I love, say that I love, love that the voice of Tom Petty. Tom Petty widens my jetty. Tori Amos doesn't name us. Doesn't blame us. Doesn't blame us. But names us. But names us. But There's a mistake. There's a mistake. Oh my God! I made a mistake. I'm getting a breast needle biopsy tomorrow, and I'm feeling so blue. I don't, I don't know what to do. I think I'm gonna add an echo to my voice. Add an echo to my voice. It's my choice to add an echo to my voice. Trumpler, bumpler, Hitler, number two. We don't need another Hitler to come back, do we? Donald Trump, you're fired. Donald Trump, you're fired. Bernie Sanders, you're hired. Donald Trump, you're fired. Bernie Sanders, you're hired. One of my poems goes, in cast the outcast, outcast out the in cast, decrease the corporation, increase cooperation, thrive on deadline, alive in headlines, thrive on deadline, alive in headlines. Decrease, decrease the corporation, the corporation, the corporation increase, increase cooperation, cooperation, incast the outcast, the outcast, the outcast, 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 outcast. outcast. Another thing is, I Another think I'm going to be a guest on the Julie, on the, Julie uh, the House of Julie the show of Julie at show. the Good Shepherd the Center the Good Shepherd in Seattle Center on February 27th. I'm hoping that's going to happen. It is going to happen. I'm going to be there, so I'll be the special guest. I'll be doing a little Kring speak poetry. So despite my emotional so problems, my emotional I'm able problems, to do my artwork do my and make, artwork, make a living full time as an art model an and art mostly model, do my art for free. Shannonkringen.com is my main website. Intimacy chasing me feel like it's a racing. Self abandonment got me stranded again. Polluted and uprooted. See, I think if I sing, speak very slowly and pause between the words, when I add the echo onto this recording, it will sound interesting. Interesting. Tecalodi Canyon. Shannon. Tecalodi Canyon. Shannon be planning. Shannon be planning. Diego San Diego. Diego San Diego. I grew up in San Diego, California. California. I love Southern California. I love the surfers and the beach and the sand. Monkey Moon coming soon. Typecast. My dragon sleep dragon monkey moon monk coming soon coming soon phases of seeing the gray the gray the gray Bada boo, bada bing, bada bing, stinging rings the the cring. Catch the wind song, spiral dry, crack the code, left and right, left and right, left. Volcano ash, erupting green, enchanted fingers, filter rain, filter rain, down the drain, down chains again, chains again, chains again, chains again, chains again.
Bada boo, bada bing, bada stinging bing, rings bada the cream. Crack the code, crack left, the and code right left and right node. I wander right and I wander, and tripping, I wander, over, and tripping I wander, over sand dollars, sand dollars moon sand dollars, hollers, moon key, hollers robbers, key robbers, enchanted, robbers, robbers, enchanted land, enchanted smoky land, hands, hands, rough hands, and cracked. And take this sand and stand alone, all one. I present, I the, present, present, I present, the, present desert, the present desert, the desert, the desert. Exercise, bring exorcism, So there's some of my cream speak poetry. Shall I add an echo to all of this? I think so. Let's do it. Let's do it. Nothing to do but Nothing do it. Do but Nothing do it. Trumpler, I'd like to bump you out of office. You're fired, Donald Trump. You're fired, Donald Trump. You're hired, Bernie Sanders. You're hired, Bernie Sanders. You're hired, Bernie Sanders. You're hired, Bernie Sanders. I'm a Democrat. I'm a socialist. What do you think of that, sports fan? I'm actually going to talk about what I think God God is, is right God now. God is right now. I'm not really an atheist, I'm not really but I'm not really a religious person, person either. either. Who, do you, person either? Who do you think God is? Do you believe in God? What is God? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the echoey voice. I'm going to talk about what I think God is. Because uh, I say what instead of who, because I don't think God is a man or a woman in the sky. I think God is energy and consciousness that creates the universe that we're in. I will say another thing, a plug for my art. The Seattle Public Library is putting uh, Kring Speak, Sing Kringnicity, music that Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, me, did with Claxton Kent from Portland. So if you go to Seattle Public Library and search uh, playback, I think it's spl.org slash playback. I guess our music is part of the local indie music section, and I'm very happy, and it's totally free to download. So I'm, I'm happy and proud to be part of the public library uh, musical database for local Seattle music. So that's cool because I, I wouldn't say that I'm uh, a full musician, but I've always leaned in a musical direction ever since I was a little kid. I listen to lots of music and memorize lyrics and I'm very tuned into music and notice nuances and subtleties when I hear music. One of the reasons why I love Tom Petty and Tori Amos so much is that they really put a lot of care into the layers of sound and they really sculpt. Tom Petty and Tori Amos, in my opinion, both are very, really high quality songwriters. They write really, really solid lyrics and, re excuse me, and really, really solid uh, melodies. Their melodies are like sculpture with sound. They're sonic sculptures. Tori Amos referred to it as sonic sculptures. And Tom Petty has referred to his music in one interview I heard him say, and then he apologized and said, oh, I'm sorry if I sound too esoteric. And I was like, no, 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 go on, Tom, go on. Because he was saying that he feels like him and his band, the Heartbreakers, um, create a lot of layers of sound with guitar and drum and bass and piano and vocals and they create textures almost like a painter that does layers and layers and layers of paint and they mix colors with music because when I hear music I have synesthesia when I hear music I see shapes that move and dance and so when Tori Amos and Tom Petty both compared their music to visual art to colors and shapes and three-dimensional physical colorful objects and paintings it made me happy because that's the way my brain works in metaphors and analogies and comparing music and art and like the audio and the visual are connected and even right now I'm recording my voice and I'm seeing my sound wave pattern on this Audacity uh, software that I'm using. And I wanted to say, if you're listening to me and you wanna do a podcast, you should get yourself a microphone and Audacity and start recording your voice and just upload it to the internet if you wanna do that. I love recording my voice like this. It, it's just like a treat. You know, it's like I'm a little kid in a bathtub playing and having a show, except it's real and I'm actually putting this on public websites. So this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. 
doing a monologue. So I wanted to say what I think God is. I call like Goddess Kring, God us. We are God, God is us. I kind of feel like evolution and God and spirituality are all the same thing to me. And so I'm not, I wasn't raised religious. My mom is very into Eastern philosophy and Advaita Vedanta non-duality and Krishnamurti and Rama, Ramana Maharshi and these people that are about direct experience with consciousness and reality and it's beyond the duality. Um, it's hard to explain what that actually means, but you're seeing the oneness of the universe and you're seeing that there are really are, there's sort of our opposites, male and female, hot and cold, you know, wet and dry. There are opposites, but they're two sides of one coin. And I feel like the people, the science people and the religious people, whatever they agree upon is what I believe in. There's wisdom in evolution and in science. And there's wisdom in the science of mind. And there's a place called the Center for Spiritual Living in Seattle where I've gone off and on for many years. Haven't been there recently. Um, but the wisdom of all religions have various um, uh, things that they agree upon. And Joseph Campbell talked about that. And so to me, God is this, this nature. When I see the ecosystem, I think, okay, that's creativity and action right there. The way the plants and the animals all coexist and the animals hunt and eat other animals and poop. And then the fertilizer, their poop is the fertilizer that makes the new plants grow and the cycles of nature that go on and on in infinity and they spin in circles just like the earth spins. And so I believe that spirituality and God and consciousness are all the same thing. And I don't actually understand people who think it's sacrilegious to refer to yourself as a God or goddess. Because if you say you're only human and you're not God, then I feel like that kind of gives you an excuse to be a messed up human being, you know, from your lower self. And I feel like if we think of ourselves as part of God, as spiritual beings, we can rise to the occasion of being uh, pure love and pure consciousness and pure unconditional love. So there's a, a Neil Young song called Unconditional Love on his Lenoise album that I love, Unconditional Love. It's a beautiful song. I think that's what it's called. Look that up. Google Neil Young Lenoise. You can listen to it for free online. It's a great album. I love it. It's from 2010. I love Neil Young along with Tom Petty, Tori Amos, Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Jason Webley, all kinds of cool musicians. Jason Webley is a local Seattle guy. Love his music. Great guy. He works with Amanda Palmer as well. So I will say that I love music and I love spirituality and I love, to me, God is a feeling I have in my heart that the universe is all connected and that the ecosystem and the plants and animals and feeling connected to other people and having compassion and kindness and empathy. To me, that's spirituality. And to me, I don't have to choose between science or spirituality or God. Although I don't believe in God as a man or a woman in the sky that judges people. I don't believe in heaven and hell, the duality of all of that. I don't believe in all of that kind of stuff, superstition, guilt, shame, fear. I don't believe in any of that. My dad is very agnostic, but he's very spiritual because he believes what you do comes back to him and he believes in treating others how you want to be treated. So my dad, actually, I think he doesn't call it spiritual because he's kind of agnostic. He just calls it doing the right thing and having a good heart and having empathy. He has empathy for other people so that he's not mean to other people because he thinks he's hurting himself if he hurts another person. And to me, that's a very spiritually wise way of being. When you see yourself connected to others in that way, it's very spiritual. So, and my mom is into Eastern philosophy. So I was kind of raised without religious dogma thrown upon me. I was never forced to go to church and I'm really glad, but I also wasn't told that I had to be an atheist either. My parents both told me in their own separate ways because they divorced when I was four. Both my parents told me that I can think for myself and I could decide what I think God is or is not. I didn't have to believe in God. I didn't have to be an atheist. I could, I could just do whatever works for me. So I'm really happy that my parents gave me the space to do that. And they allowed me to think for myself. And they, in fact, they told me to question everything. And they didn't throw dogma down my throat in terms of God or spirituality or religion or science. 
So they're both open-minded human beings and they're intuitive and they're sensitive and I'm really fortunate in that way. So in other ways, my childhood was rough. There was a lot of moving around, marriages and divorces. So I just wanted to say that I'm really grateful for that. My mom put me in alternative school, etc. So, oh, okay. So you're listening to Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. That's me. I'm 48 and <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm so repetitive. I'm very, very nervous to get my breast needle biopsy tomorrow, but I'm really happy to get it over with. It's happening on Friday which is tomorrow. Today is, is February 16th, 2017. So tomorrow, 20, uh, February 17th, 2017, I'm having a breast needle biopsy as well as going to the dentist. So wish me luck. Send me good vibes if you want. I hope you're having a good day or night. And I urge you if you want to record your voice to do it and put it out there in the world. I love recording my voice. I've always wanted to have some kind of show. So Thank you for joining me. Fusion drives fusion illusion drives to erosion. Erosion, 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 erosion guides erosion fusion, guides to, explosion. fusion to, explosion. to explosion. Exploring, Exploring multimedia. multimedia. It's my cedia to explore multimedia. Seeds, water seed, exploring the seeds of multimedia, infinite, intricate pattern, infinite, intricate pattern, nature spiraling, 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 bada boo, bada bing, what was that poem, synchronicity, synchronicity, Gaining light, gaining a light, healthy flight, gaining a healthy flight for freedom a and embracing grace. Moon shown face. Oh, just take me away to Spain. Just take me away to Spain. Gaining light, a healthy flight for freedom and embracing grace. Shoot, I forgot the words to that poem. I have a lot of poems in my head. What are the words to the cream speed? Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring. Oh, now I remember. Shred the pain. Shred the pain. Drain the stain. Drain the stain. Oh, just take me away to Spain. Gaining light. Gaining a healthy flight. A healthy flight for freedom and embracing grace. Embracing grace. Moon shone face. Moon face. Intimacy chasing me. Chasing me. Feel like it's a race. Feel like it's a race. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ophelia. Melodrama. Melodrama. Pie. Eating bone and flesh. Bormy, horny, adore me. Store me in a cool, dry, a cool dry, place. dry place. This rhyme is this divine. Rhyme is yeah, divine. Right. yeah, right. I fight yeah. despite I the fight miracle despite of my, my birth. birth. Questioning, my questioning, my worth. questioning my worth. Questioning my worth. Questioning my worth. Cut away the doubt Cut away in the this doubt. drought the of, passion. Doubt. of passion. Should be fashioned should be to have, fashion. to have. Should be self-indulgence. Have. self-indulgence. Self-indulgence. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Stop, Stop projecting your Stop shadow. Projecting your Stop shadow. Projecting your wander, shadow. Wander, 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 discover, discover, sand dunes and moon tunes of interludes with solitude, solitude, opal moon stone, sand dunes, sand stone. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. So I was thinking about healthcare, and I was thinking that in my mind, healthcare should be a public service, just like the public library is, just like my friends in Europe mostly have, that we pay our taxes and uh, for a small fee. And young and old, sick and poor, wealthy and middle class and poor and all the different people in society deserve the public service known as health care. I don't really want health insurance. What I want is health care, medical treatment, a health card. So my fantasy would be Donald Trump, you're fired. Bernie Sanders, you're hired. And then we would have Bernie Sanders take over and he would induct single payer nonprofit health care and we would dismantle the for profit pharmaceutical health care and health insurance companies and we would replace it with federal federally funded tax based 
single-payer, nonprofit public service health care for all people, all income levels, and it would be separate from your employment and your job. It would just be part of your taxes. And the federal government would stand up to the pharmaceutical companies and not let them jack the prices up and price gouge us. So public nonprofit health care nationwide. That's what I want. See you next week. Ocean Beam, Ocean come, beam. Clean. Ocean come clean. Ocean come beam. clean. Come clean. Manifesting dreams. Inner energy. Life force. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Life Life force. Force. Come forth. Come Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.